You know how good jokes don't need explaining? Well, let me explain. Despite doing my best to avoid the predictable return of the infamous micro miniskirt, I was eventually exposed to this outfit and all its replicant influencer glory. Soon after this encounter, the cogs began to turn and I was all of a sudden reminded of the blue sweater scene from The Devil Wears Prada. And the cogs turned some more. If you didn't already know, Miu Miu is owned by Prada and was often referred to as its little sister. How ironic that this Miu Miu sweater had so much in common with the one that the Prada wearing devil called out for being lumpy. You know, the one fished out from a clearance bin in a tragic casual corner somewhere. Clearly all this thinking had churned my brain into butter and I was going to make it my mission to recreate the Miu Miu ensemble freehand with a pre glow up and sex twist. This is also beyond the point of no return. For one thing, making the skirt turned out to be an absolute saga, and you can see how that went down here. As a quick disclaimer, the sweater I'll be making will be neither cerulean nor polyblend, partly due to market limitations, but mostly because I found a good Aran weight wool in a similar blue that I really like. If you'd like to join me in knitting your own cable sweater, make sure to buy more yarn than you would usually need. Because cables are kinda thirsty. Before getting stuck right in, I needed to figure out both the ribbing and cable pattern. To avoid making the ribbing too chunky with a fold over, I decided to finally give the tubular cast on a shot. <gasps> it definitely seems to be one of the more coveted cast ons, but at what cost? Count me in. I ended up going with the provisional yarn method, not flat but in the round and what can I say? I really don't know where to begin with making things easier for myself. Anyway, things looked about right and there was nothing a bit of practice couldn't improve. It was time to sample using the final yarn, and as per usual, I was a little too excited about starting this project, especially since I'd been looking forward to it for quite some time. And so I dove straight into sampling the cables before paying any attention to the actual reference garment. Sure, this was kind of dumb, but it helped me to channel some of my excess excitement while also warming back up to cable knitting again. To create the cables, I just made a basic cable twist by slipping my stitches to the front of the work. After finally glancing at some stills from the scene, it was obvious that there were alternating stockinette and cable columns, so I finally sampled it by alternating the columns with single pearl stitches in between. Proportionally, things were looking about right, bearing in mind the heavier yarn weight. With the sampling being relatively satisfactory, I decided to move on to the sleeve cuff. Things were looking pretty straightforward at this point, and admittedly, I did pat myself on the back for actually doing some sampling for once. If you're at all familiar with my projects, you probably already know what that means. Yeah, they look exactly the same to me. So here's a breakdown of everything that happened. I fudged the tension in the first attempt, and although things were better the second time around, I decided to widen the cuff to avoid having to make increases before the cables. It happened again. During the third attempt, I fudged the tension yet again, and the ribbing still looked uneven. Things were finally on track by the fourth try, but then I had to figure out the increases, so I sampled a couple separately. I couldn't decide if I was happy with a closer fit sleeve like the one in the movie, or a looser fit one like the one seen paired with a Miu Miu skirt. Before you question my sanity, or how I've even made it well into adulthood, simply drafting the ideal garment probably wouldn't have given me the dreamy blue sweater of my imagination, because thoughts rarely translate into yarn or fabric so easily. So, to get things as close to a genuine wardrobe staple as I could, this sort of haphazard sampling was kind of a non-negotiable, considering my experience level. And to be clear, I'm not trying to faithfully replicate the movie sweater, because I actually want to like it. Okay, so this is the new cuff that I started knitting. I definitely prefer the first one. So I think I'm just gonna have to deal with having to make the increases for this one. This one is big enough that I probably won't have to do any increases, but for some reason I really have this long sleeve sweater silhouette in mind that I not only do I want to make because that's kind of what Andy's sweater looks like, but because I really miss having those sleeves that cover half of your hand. To show you the increases and why I kind of didn't want to make them, I made two different types of increases. One where the normal stockinette column just branches out and then the cable column comes out of it like that. And... 
it's not bad, but I also don't like it that much. Uh, the second one I tried was having the two parts of the cable kind of split. And if I'm honest, I don't prefer one to the other. I just don't particularly like either of them either. Either, 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 I, either, 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 either. Anyway. It's times like these when you really wish you had access to the reference garment. There were so many options for the increases, and it was difficult to tell what kind to go with. Some were obviously more likely than others, but I wouldn't even be surprised if the sleeves were just straight tubes. Here's the increase that I made. It's basically the same as the one in my sample, except I staggered the stitches a bit more, so it didn't branch out too wide. The more I looked at it, the more I realised that I really doubt that Andy sweater would have an increase that looks like this. And the penny finally dropped. Have you ever gone straight from zero to weird, completely missing the most obvious and sensible answer? This wasn't an in the round project. It was never an in the round project. This was an entirely flat one. 10 points if you've been cursing out your screen for the last however many minutes. I'm not quite sure why, but I always go to knitting sleeves in the round, even though it might not make the most sense. So although knitting on needles like this once you're used to it isn't particularly difficult, it's also not as easy as knitting flat. In my opinion. It's mainly just because it doesn't feel as comfortable, and you have to constantly keep switching needles. Although technically I could just continue, it would also mean having to knit another sleeve that looks just like this. And I'd rather just restart. Admittedly, I took the tuber look of the cerulean blue sweater a little too on the nose, and the more I thought about it, the more I questioned which plane of existence I had been inhabiting this entire time. This is so much better than doing it in the round. Wow. It's a lot more uniform. Despite the mandatory devastation that seems to come with the majority of my projects recently, if not since forever, I was glad that the process so far had answered a lot of questions already. <laughs> Of all the skeins, and all the stores, and all the world, why did it have to be in this one? I'm doing two sets of increases on both sides. After I finish increasing, I'm going to start decreasing to shape the sleeve, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just going to try on my sleeve as it currently is. I think the good thing about working in the round at the beginning was that I could really see how it fits, but now it's kind of a bit dubious. I, I think it should be fine. I mean, it's still stretchy at the end of the day. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, One thing that actually surprised me was I thought that because my yarn weight's a lot heavier than the original, that the cable would actually be a bit too big. But judging from the stills I have for reference, it actually doesn't look too far off. So that's a nice surprise. I'm glad the cable turned out the way it did. I was worried that it just wasn't showing enough, but I think it just depends on the lighting. And obviously if I stretch it, you can definitely see more definition. It's just so nice to stretch. As mentioned briefly before, the sleeves were a good gauge for the body panels, which were wider, shorter, and had fewer increases added to each side. My guess is that Andy's sweater had some shaping to it, and was meant to be long and fitted. It was just a few sizes too big. However, I kept the shaping to a minimum, since I wanted a shorter kind of mid-rise level fit. Think a happy medium between the original sweater and the Miu Miu Super Crop. That didn't sound good. I'm redoing the front panel again because I miscalculated my stitches. I started both panels with a tubular cast on, and I was not ready for how much easier it was to do flat. Not only was it simpler, it also turned out a lot neater. The more I knit with these wooden needles, the more I started to question why my work was suddenly so much neater. And I decided to do some research, because confirmation bias is what makes the world go round. And I didn't find anything that said this specifically, Anyway, maybe it was down to sheer practice, used or unused yarn, or just switching back to knitting English completely, but the wooden needles were still neater and more comfortable to knit with overall. Let me know what your needle preferences are, and whether or not you agree. It was finally time to shape the neckline, so I started off by casting off from the center and shaping one side first before moving on to the other. I then had to repeat the same for the back panel, except I cast off for the neckline later than I did for the front. Obviously, I needed a second sleeve as well.
Once both panels and sleeves were complete, the next step was to attach the front and back panel at the shoulders. This was so that I could then knit the collar. This is the front panel and this is the back panel. I'm going to lay them right sides together. And you can already see that I left some really long ends when I was casting off. And that's because I'm going to use the ends to crochet everything together. Basically, you probably know what I'm going to say, but this is just to avoid as many yarn ends as possible. So I'm going to insert my hook into the first V on this side. On the right side, it's a V. On the wrong side, it's also a V. And for this, I'm going to use a slip stitch. So this is the finished seam, and I really like how it literally looks like a seam. I know that sounds really funny, but that's because I've been using the Kitchener stitch, which basically makes everything look invisible. But this one, it's a very clear, sharp seam. On the other side, there is a bit of bulk, but the reason why I like it is because there'll be a lot of weight on the shoulder seams. So the weight itself will kind of stretch it out and flatten it so that it won't overstretch, in theory. I'm just going to do this with the other side, and that will be my shoulder seams done. Since I'd used the tubular cast on for the sweater ribbing, the collar was no exception. Except, this time instead of casting on with it, I was going to cast off with it. To start, I knit into my existing neckline stitches to form a round, and continued with the same one by one rib used for the rest of the sweater. For the tubular cast off, you basically start two rows before you want your collar to finish. You then double knit for the next four rounds, alternating each with knit and purl rounds. To fully cast off, I used a darning needle like so. This was the first time I had tried it, and I wouldn't recommend the sort of experimenting with your final project. Getting the tension right was a little tricky, and my impatience definitely got the better of me, especially so close to finishing. Regardless, I was pleased with how it looked in the end, and I hate to say it, but I'm a little hooked on these tubular methods. Next was stitching the panels together, and predictably, I was going to wing it. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit hesitant to get started because experience would suggest that I'll have to do the sleeves a few times over. I don't know if you also experience the same thing, because in theory this should be the easiest part, but fingers crossed. The sleeves were simple enough, and basically involved mattress stitching the sleeve into the armhole on the right side of each knit. This tends to be a little awkward for me because there's always a phantom stitch that makes its way into the seam somewhere, and I usually end up frogging at least once. I also realised the one really good thing about knitting cable sweaters, or just cable in general, is that if you need to sew up seams, they're super easy to match up. This time wasn't so bad, and I have a feeling that it was mostly because of the heavier yarn, and there's a lower chance of getting things wrong when there are fewer stitches to work with. The hard part was yet to come. Yes, the dreaded side seams. The seams that make you question your arithmetic capabilities, that make you wonder if you need to be sent back to kindergarten to learn how to count properly. Again, I was pleasantly surprised by how well the stitches matched up, but the thing that got me was the type of stitch. So I'm pretty unsure about the mattress stitch at the moment for the side seam. So just to check what my options are really, I'm going to slip stitch the panels together and see how that looks. And if it doesn't look as good as this, then I'll just revert back to the mattress stitch. I then changed to slip stitching with a crochet hook, but that looked so bad I may as well have hot glued the edges together. Eventually, I went back to the mattress stitch along the very outer edge of each panel, and that worked out best. Not the finish I was expecting, but the best finish I was going to get. It did cross my mind that perhaps I should make a habit of not including the weaving of ends in my videos, but why deprive you of the satisfaction that only tidying vicariously can bring, especially when it sparks so much joy? Marie condolences. To use the lyrical genius of the School of Rock, you're not hardcore, unless you live hardcore. But the legend of the lumpy sweater was way hardcore. This sweater was relatively unproblematic compared to other projects, and it's nice to think that it might have been from all the practice I've had since starting this channel. Fit-wise, it's a little chunkier than expected, but it's super warm, which is a plus. I'd definitely like to try the same cable pattern in a lighter yarn weight for warmer months. In terms of how it goes together with a skirt as an outfit, I'm not mad at it, although perhaps I've just been staring at these garments far too long. It is, however, a stark reminder of why trends are just that. So I suppose the real message is this. Make clothes that you like and wear them for as long as you can, even if they're lumpy. 